In previous videos and video series, we've looked at wind turbine modeling and open source programs. But here we are going to look at PyWeek. PyWeek is an open source wind farm simulation program, or you can call it a software, since it also gives you a graphical user interface to actually work with. In this video, we are going to look at the purpose of this video series, wind farm details and terminologies, PyWeek, the user documentation, how to download and install PyWeek. We are going to explore predefined codes. We are going to also explore how you can actually generate our own user-defined models using code. And in this case, we are talking of Python. Then we are going to look at what videos are going to be next in the series. For wind farm terminology and details, I believe most of the viewers of this channel have some understanding of wind farms and wind turbines in general. But just for those who are just coming into the system newly or for those just for a um, general overview for everyone who is interested. If you are working with more than one wind turbine, let's say you are working with two wind turbines, if you place them side by side, initially it might seem like there is no issue. But once those wind turbine heads begin to rotate about an axis, let's say the direction of the wind changes and those wind turbine heads have to rotate to follow the wind direction, then it's possible that there's one turbine that can impact the next turbine, assuming those turbines now become one behind the other when the wind turbine rotates to follow the wind direction. So that's why you have this concept of wake. The wake is basically the wind profile after it has crossed a wind, it has crossed wind turbine blades. So the packets of wind behind the wind turbine is the wake. So sometimes, let's say you're having a wind speed of, let's say 10 meters per second. Once it crosses the wind turbine, it can actually change. It can, in most cases, it's going to reduce within the boundary of where you have the wind turbine blades. So according to various theories, as you move down, probably when you get to about 10 D, D, which is the diameter of the wind turbine blade, you actually have this wind speed recovering. But there are multiple models. For example, there are some models that will tell you that after that wind speed drops behind the wind turbine, which you also call um, wind deficits, after that drop in wind speed, it's also possible that wind, which is above and below the boundary of the wind turbine blades, can also mix into that wake of the wind um, of the wind um, profile. So there are various theories and models. So it's because of these theories and models that's why we are going to talk about how to define your own personal model in terms of if you are going to model simulate a wind farm, you need to define your own based on the different theories that you understand. So for PyWeek documentation and install. So basically, if we do a Google search, um, search for PyWeek, this will come up or something similar. Once you click on it, it will take you straight um, to, the web, to the website where you have PyWeek. So this is actually the URL for PyWeek documentation. But um, in the description below, I'm also going to leave a copy of the document. We have converted this document into PDF, so you can always download it. So a copy of this PDF is going to be available. So for PyWeek, in order to run and install PyWeek, you are going to be seeing in the video here, you will see that there are different options. According to the documentation, they recommend that you use Anaconda. So if you don't use Anaconda, you can always use um, Python 3, Python 3, that's the different versions of Python 3. Or you can also use JupyterLab. I've chosen JupyterLab because JupyterLab is more user-friendly in terms of when you want to quickly see a representation of whatever you are coding. So line by line, you can actually see it. So you can see from this video how I've shown how each of them works. For Python, if you open the shell itself, the Python shell, the IDO shell, and you copy these codes directly from the user documentation, and you paste it in Python IDO shell, and you hit run, it's going to give you an error meaning that you have to now create a separate file and save it. So in each case, if you want to see what you are doing, you have to save your file, 
run, then you come to the IDO shell, and then you type in the the file, the name of that file again, as well as its method, and run it for you to see your results. Anaconda follows um, a different pattern, but I didn't use Anaconda here because of some certain requirements that my system could not meet. So I've used Jupyter. So Jupyter is quite straightforward. Once you have installed Jupyter, you can just run it directly. So you can work on um, the internet. So you can see that in the video, the different advantages and disadvantages of the different options for running PyWeek code. So now we are going to go over um, predefined codes within the user documentation. So it's available online. So you will see the different bullet you you will see the different bullet points which we have selected. So quick start as well as uh, wind turbine object. So you will see how we'll, we are going to just copy and paste this code into Jupyter Notebook to see the results being generated by PyWake and to compare it with what is on the user documentation. So this is what is going to be done for the two different exercises we have selected. So once this is done, it's going to be replicated over other. So with quick start, you then um, we are just copying some code arbitrarily here. We see the effect. You see, it's giving us exactly the output that I already have in this PyWave user documentation to tell you that we are in line with what is being expected. So if you follow this video, you see how everything is done according to what is according to what is um, in user documentation. So for for those who don't know, for Jupyter, that circle there is usually shaded when the code is processing. But once it's done processing, it then on in it then removes the shading and becomes um, empty, blank, empty, and you then have. And the codes that you require. So we follow all the steps in user documentation. We see that we are generating the same information as has been described in the user documentation. So this is what is done for this series and for other series. So in case you have any issue when you are running your own code, you can come back and look at what was done here um, over time. So before we would then we will attend to your question. If you have any question, we can look at it together. You can also leave your comments in the comment section. In subsequent video, you can look at more other information that people are bringing up in order to try and find solutions when necessary. Um, from there, we will then look at Python. Um, we we'll then look at Python um, classes and objects in order to create user-defined types. So this is basically um, the video on. Highway. This is part one. So you can we are going over the user documentation prior to developing our user defined code. So you can go ahead and complete the video. Thank you.
But once we have concluded with the user documentation pertaining to the predefined code, we'll then go into discussing user-defined models. When it comes to user-defined user models, there are multiple models in wind, um, wind turbine technology. If you are talking of models that has to do with the wind turbine or the corrections, for example, you can have, um, when you are doing BEM, which is the blade element momentum design for the um, elements of the wind turbine blade, at some point you are going to do some corrections, which is like a tip loss factor correction. So there's also one in pram tool and correction and gulat correction. So there are multiple corrections and models. And you cannot just list everything by yourself. But in case you want to change them, in this section of um, PyWake, it's possible to do that where you have the user defined models. So we'll go over it, but I just want us to know some prerequisites prior to going into um, development of our own user defined codes in order to create our own model. So apart from the wind turbine and corrections and models, you also have corrections for turbulent and steady wind. So there are some models that just assume that the wind profile in that wind farm is steady. Then there are others that describe turbulence. But even in terms of turbulence, there are multiple models that you can generate. I know your own site is also unique. So you, you may want to define some certain features for your own site based on, let's say you've installed a leader and you've been able to assess the wind speed and variation over a long period of time. So you have direction and you have intensity. So those are some information when it has to do with modeling the, the wind itself. Apart from that, for industrial applications, and there are multiple theories. So there are some textbook theories, which some of them are now dated. So you actually need more based on industry experience. You know, for industry, they simplify what they are doing. In most cases, you are getting an estimate of the annual energy production, AEP, not an exact value. So for the industry, they actually want to be fast. So they use more simplified uh, methods in order to estimate a uh, wind farm wake um, pattern and meandering and all those kind of information having to do with the wake. So they simplify it. But for more modern um, approaches, where you have, for example, academia and other um, research institutes, they have more recent information so you have it based on experiments and literature have been developed and also observations from existing wind farms so they have de developed more accurate ways to model the wake behind wind turbines in a wind farm so all of this can be generated as models there are already models but you can always tweak them to what you actually want so these are just various um, wake model so for example if your wind turbine wake is going to be hitting the ground what's the effect as it moves beyond that point to other wind turbines so it is quite intricate so industry they choose to simplify it it's quite intricate because when when you simplify it like the industry you're actually getting like an average value it may not be as accurate but maybe your accuracy is more than 90 percent compared to if you had to use the exact values based on experience, experiments and observation. So this is another example of, let's say this is 20D downstream after a wind turbine, 20 diameters of the wind distance. You see how the wind speed is recovering to almost what it was before striking the wind turbine. So you see the different um, deficit models from the different um, mod, um, models that have been created for different errors and profiles. So you see how they all relate to each other. So in order to be able to successfully create user-defined models, you also need to understand certain advanced aspects of Python, which has to do with classes and objects. So we may need to go over um, classes and objects in order to be able to carry out um, what is required to create user-defined models. I'm putting it out here because it's possible that you know, some people that watch this channel are good with programming, so they can go ahead and study all these things, or they can actually implement it immediately, but not everyone is at that stage. So for those who may be needing some insight to how it's done, in this video series, we are also going to cover um, creation of um, 
advanced classes with um, Python, which is an advanced aspect of Python. So basically, in this video series, we are going to look at exploring predefined codes for PyWeek. Afterwards, we'll then go into generation of user-defined models with PyWeek. Thank you for watching this video. This is Catchment of Resources, where we create for better living.